we are being transformed. And we go from glory to glory with unveiled faces to become the brightness of the glory of God. Hebrews 1 and 3. Jesus is the brightness of his glory. He is the express image of God. In 2 Corinthians 3 and 18, beholding in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So we are being transformed changed into the same image to behold the glory of God. Job 37 and 18 tells us that the sky is a molten mirror, a hot mirror. And we look into the heavens, into the glory of God through the mirror to be transformed into that image of the heavenly things. 1 Corinthians 15, 45 through 51. We bear the image of the earth. But we are being transformed and we go from glory to glory to be changed, looking through the mirror, the sky into the heavens, and to that glory of the heavenly things. Glory, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 2 and 6 tells us that man was crowned with glory. The crown the enemy desired the most. The image of the ancient of days. Proverbs 16 and 31, the image of the white head and white hair. The image of godly wisdom. The wisdom of an ancient of days from the beginning. God is an ancient of day because the word was in the beginning. And the word was God. John 1 and 1. And the word was made flesh. John 1 and 14. In the book of 1 John 3 and 2 it says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And we are the children of God. And our eternal future has not been yet revealed to us. So we look through the sky, the mirror, to behold the glory of God. The mystery of of the church. 1 Corinthians 15 and 51, Ephesians 5, 27 through 32. 1 Corinthians 15 and 51, we shall be changed, transformed. Ephesians 5 and 27 will be transformed into the glorious church, into the image of of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ because we are bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh and we are members of his body, Ephesians 5 and 30. What mystery? That's not a mystery because Genesis 2, 21 through 23 tells us that Adam and his wife, his church, she was presented to him when God brought her to the man just like in Ephesians 5 and 27. That mystery, we already know that she was bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh and that her name was called Adam also, which whatever name Christ is, we will be called his name, just like the woman was called Adam in Genesis 5 and 2. There is another image. The mystery of truth, of the image of the glory of God the glory in the image of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Not in the body that he was first in. That's the image of the first Adam and the first church. But the last Adam, 1 Corinthians 15 and 45, and the church will be another 
body because Christ done laid down that body of Adam. That was the seed that was sown in the earth. And what's sown in the earth by the seed, when it produces fruit, it does not bear the image of the seed that went into the ground. Christ raised up a new body. That's the mystery of the church. The mystery of the church is the body that went into the ground. It's not the body that was raised up because we know they didn't even recognize Jesus. His disciples didn't recognize him. Even Doubting Thomas had to see the holes in his hands and the piercing just to know that this was the Lord Jesus Christ because they did not recognize that body. Because the body that was sowed was the body of Adam. The body that was raised was the new body in 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 4. That's the great mystery. The great mystery of the new body, the new image of God, the new glory of God, and his glorious church. Here we go, church. The butter and the honey on the bread. 1 Corinthians 15 and 49, we have bared the image of the earthly. That's the first Adam. Now we will bear the image of the heavenly. That's the new body, the mystery of the church. That's the new body that was raised from the dead. Christ was raised first. His members of his body was raised after that. The Old Testament saints. The cloud of witnesses, Hebrews 12 and 1. Philippians 3 and 20 and 21, our conversation is in heaven. From where we look for the Savior, Jesus Christ, 21, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the workings, whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Did you hear that, church? He's going to change our vile body that it may be fashioned like to his glorious body, which Ephesians 5 and 27 says that we are the glorious church. We will be the brightness of his glory. The glory of God, the image of Jesus Christ, Hebrews 1 and 3. Now the book of Revelation 1 and 14, John sees Jesus as the ancient of days. He sees that his hair, his head is white like wool. The wool represents Christ as the Lamb of God. Because Revelation 5 and 6. And then John sees Christ. He said, Behold the Lamb of God. So the wool is a represents Christ being the Lamb of God. The hair white is the image of the Ancient of Days. Proverbs 16 and 31. That's the crown of glory. Daniel 7 and 9. In the book of Revelation 1 and 14, it says that his eyes were as a flame of fire. Romans 13, 1 through 4, these are the ministers of God. Hebrews 1 and 7, he makes his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. So we know that the eyes of Christ are a flame of fire because he is a minister of God. His hair is white like wool because he is a lamb of God. It is white his head and his hair because he is an ancient of days. Because he is the word of God. He was in the beginning. See, did you notice something? No matter how many bodies he put on, he's still the Lamb of God. He's still the word of God. We see that in the book of Revelation 19, 13, 14, 15. He's still the word of God. Even in a new body. See, that's what I've been trying to get you to pay attention to, church. It doesn't matter how many bodies you put on. What spirit you are of will still be the same. I don't care how many garments of flesh you put on. You are still the spirit you are of. Even in Revelation 21 and 23, when Christ is the light of the city, he is still the word of God. Because it is the word of God that created the new heaven and the new earth. Somebody had to create it. John 1 and 3, Jesus, not Jesus, let's say the word of God. The, God spoke his word, and it did not return back to him void. It accomplished what he sent it out there to do. Even in the new heaven and earth, it was created 
by the word of God. So in the beginning of this new heaven and new earth, it is still the word of God that created it. And just think, you're going to be like Jesus. You're going to be a life-giving spirit. You're going to be able to create, to bring forth life. Whatever Jesus is, we are going to be also. We are bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. So we become life-given spirits in the new heaven, in the new earth. When I talk with people about the new heaven and the new earth, they have this image in their mind that they're still going to be the same as they were on this earth. Oh, no, you're not. You have been transformed. You're going from glory to glory with an unveiled face. You are going into the brightness of his glory. If he is the light of this city, so are you. If he is a life-giving spirit, so are you. Jesus said, greater works that I have done, you shall do. Well, I don't know about you. I'm still not able to perform the amazing works that Christ did in this earth. But he's not talking about me in this earth right now. Because I'm going to go from glory to glory, even in the thousand years reign of Christ. We will yet go from glory to glory until we get into the brightness of his glory, which is in the new heaven and the new earth. And then truly, we become as he is. And if he creates, we create. And that's the greater work where we'll be doing the great work of God is in the new heaven and the new earth. We go from glory to glory to glory. Now back to Revelation 1 and 15. In his right hand are seven stars. Revelation 1 and 20 said the seven stars are seven angels. The seven stars in the book of Amos 5 and 8. The seven stars are Pleiades in the book of Job 38 and 31. Can you bind the sweet influence of Pleiades? So seven ministers, seven angels, seven stars of Pleiades over the seven churches. What influence did they have because five of these churches fell away to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils? So only two had a good influence over two of the churches in the book of Revelation. And, and the Holy Spirit of God warned me many years ago that how even the angels, when they were among the humans on the earth, that the spirit of the world and the ruler of this world in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4 had an influence over them. And even darken their minds from the glorious light of the gospel of Christ. We see that in the book of Revelation. On the seven churches. There are seven churches. Five are in darkness. Their oil is gone. If you had a lamp and you had oil and your oil is gone. Then you are in darkness. The darkness of this world has influenced you. It has seduced you. And that's what we see in the book of Revelation when we see seven churches and we see five are fallen, given over to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So if they had seven angels, seven stars of Pleiades that had a sweet influence, seven ministers, then something happened to those ministers that five of the churches had fallen away. Back to the book of Revelation 1 and 15. His feet are likened to fine brass. Michael 4 and 13 said the feet of Zion are brass. And they will break in pieces many people with that brass feet. Hebrews 12, 22 and 23. Jesus is the church of the firstborn from the dead. Colossians 1 and 18. His feet. Ephesians 6 and 15 are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Jesus is the gospel of peace. Psalms 12 and 6, the word of the Lord are pure words like silver tried in a furnace of the earth. Purified, refined seven times. Mm. 
That's powerful right there, church. That'll get you right there. That's the good stuff right there. That's the butter and the honey on the bread. Amen. Daniel 3 and 8 through 25, the Son of God was in the fiery furnace. Daniel 3 and 19, they were told to fire up the fire in the furnace seven times hotter. The furnace was fired up because Psalms 12 and 6 says the word of God was purified seven times. Christ is the word of God. John 1 and 1, John 1 and 14. And the book of Revelation 1 and 15 tells us his voice was of many waters. Mm, that's powerful right there if you'll look deep into the word of God and just grab a hold of that good word and just eat that butter and honey on the bread. <laughs> Woo, it's the good stuff, I'm telling you. It don't get no better than that. Here we go, church. The book of Revelation 17 and 15 tells us that the waters are nations, people, and tongues. Ezekiel 43 and 2 said his voice was like the noise of many waters. Jeremiah 10 and 13, when he uttered his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens. Jeremiah 25 and 30, glory, hallelujah, the Lord shall roar from on high. Utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation and tread the grapes. Well, we know that that is Revelation 10 and 3. And the grapes are Revelation 14 and 20. And the grapes are Jerusalem, Hosea 9 and 9 and 10. When God saw Israel in the wilderness. He saw them as grapes. Him roaring as a lion, showing that he was roaring out of Zion. Zion is his habitation. Psalms 132, 13, and 14. Zion is the church of the firstborn. Hebrews 12, 22, and 23. In the book of Joel, chapter 2 and verse 11, Joel has that amazing revelation of a future event of seeing the Lord Jesus Christ, and he shall utter his voice before his army. Daniel 4 and 35, the armies of heaven. Joel 3 and 16, the Lord roared out of Zion. Zion, because Christ is the Lion of Judah. Genesis 49, 9 and 10. Hebrews 12, 22 and 23 is the church of the firstborn. The firstborn from the dead. Colossians 1 and 18. And his voice he uttered from Jerusalem. And the heavens and earth shall shake. Galatians 4 and 26. The Jerusalem above is the mother of us all. Revelation 12, 1 through 5. The heavenly Jerusalem. The prophet said that the heavens and earth would shake. Because he uttered his voice before his army. That's what Joel 2 and 11. When Jesus utters his voice before his army, his camp is great. His army, Revelation 19 and 14, the armies of heaven. Genesis 1, 6 through 8. There is waters above the heavens and waters under the heavens. Christ has armies. He'll have armies on the earth. He'll have his army in the heavens. Ezekiel 1, 22 through 26. Ezekiel. I just love Ezekiel. I do. I'm telling you, that's my man right there. Ezekiel is my man. If I'm going to say that all the prophets in the word of God that I love the most, it is Ezekiel. Because I make such a connection with this prophet. He's going to see the ferment, which is heaven, Genesis 1 and 8. So Ezekiel is looking in a vision, church, if you can imagine and go into the vision with this great man of God. He's going to see the living creatures. And he says, upon their heads he sees heaven. 26, verse 26, he said, but above that heaven, oh glory, hallelujah, can you see it in the vision, church? 
Above that heaven is another heaven, which is the throne of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the prophet is seeing the heaven and the heavens of heavens. Because there's not one heaven, church. There's heavens of heavens. When Christ ascended, he ascended far above all heavens. Glory, hallelujah. I could preach on that one all day long. In the book of Revelation 1 and 16, he has a sharp two-edged sword out of his mouth. Revelation 19 and 15, it is the word of God. Ephesians 6 and 17, it is the word of God. Hebrews 4 and 12, it is the word of God. Because Jesus is the word of God. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. That's what the word of God says. Out of the mouth of Jesus. Out of his heart is the abundance of what he speaks. He is the word of God, John 1 and 1. He is the sharp two-edged sword. The Old Testament, the New Testament. Are you getting me now, church? Are you getting me now? <laughs> this is amazing. It is amazing. Revelation 1 and 16, his appearance. As the sun shining in his strength. Christ is the strength of the glory of the sun. Matthew 17, 1 through 3. On the mountain of transfiguration, Christ's face was as the sun and his garment as light. Because the two prophets, Elijah and Moses, had seen the glory of God. As the brightness of the glory of heaven. They did not know him. In the image of a man. So he transformed himself. Into the brightness of the glory of heaven. Mm -mm -mm. Oh I could tell you some stuff on that right there alone. That would curl your hair. I'm telling you it is amazing. Just amazing work of God. You just look into the amazing work of God. I tell you you would see some stuff. The light. The glory of God. Revelation 21 and 23. Matthew 13 and 43. The righteous shine is the sun. Malachi 4 and 2. Christ is the son of righteousness. The Moses and Elijah, the two prophets, are standing the law and the prophet. Jesus is there to reveal to these two. They are brought there to the mountain of transfiguration to behold the glory of the future glory of God. Oh, my goodness. That's some stuff right there, church. Alone, that's powerful. That should shake you right there. Jesus is going to establish both the law and the prophets and to establish a new covenant to the law and the prophets. To say to these two, I am the fulfillment of the law and the fulfillment of the prophet. I brought you here on the mountain of transfiguration to show you the future glory of God. Because they knew the heavens was the brightness of the glory of God, the Son. Christ appeared to them in a future glory that will be. He is establishing a new covenant, a blood covenant. Luke 22 and 20. Mm -mm -mm. I could preach on that, church. Mm. If you were sitting here in front of me and with me, I would just take you right on into that amazing glory and that amazing revelation knowledge on just what Christ is doing right here for his disciples that are there to witness this. And to Moses and Elijah, my goodness, it's powerful, church. It is just powerful. And how powerful is the glory in the image of the ancient of days and the mystery of the church and the transformation that we will be truly. We look through the mirror as an image of the heavenly things. That we go from glory to glory with unveiled faces. We don't want our face to be veiled. We want it to be unveiled. Because we want to behold the glory that we go from. That we are transformed. And we are transformed when we put off this body. And we put on that new body. 
And then we enter into the thousand year reign of Christ and we behold the glory that we are being transformed in into just that day of being with Christ. Christ the mirror image. We will look upon his face and we are being transformed into the image of the glory of Christ in the thousand year reign. And then the new heaven and the new earth you are yet going from glory to glory to glory. Those in the earth and the new heaven in that day that the word of God has created the new heaven and the new earth, which Christ is the word of God. Those in the earth are not looking through the sky any longer. There is no sky there because there's no separation. They are looking into our faces they are looking into the face of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because our face is the same face as His. We behold His glory. We are the express image of His person. We are the brightness of His glory. What He looks like, we will look like. Those in the earth that go into the city through the gates are going into the city and to the presence of God and to the throne of God in Jesus Christ to be transformed and to that image. Those in the earth will be transformed also by going into the presence of Jesus Christ. And when they fellowship with us, they are being transformed into that glory because our glory the glory of the unveiled church is the glory of God. The glory of Jesus Christ because Christ is God. Christ will not change from being God just because we're in a new heaven and a new earth. He is God in a body. You will be the image of God in a body. You will be the image and the likeness of Jesus Christ. Because Philippians said that your body, your vile body, will be changed into his image. You see, those prophets, those Old Testament saints, and even the New Testament saints and the disciples, they had that revelation knowledge before you and I did. And here we are in 2023, and we're just now coming into the revelation knowledge of who we will be when we should have known all along through the Word of God. But people read, and they're looking, but they're not seeing. You got to look beyond what is there, church, because everything starts out like you're looking, but you're not seeing. Because when Jesus was on the earth, there was a multitude of people that followed him because everybody's there for whatever reason. Whatever reason you're there for, God knows it. But when Jesus gave a parable, he went and sat at the top of the mountain and only two of his disciples followed him and said, Lord, what does that parable mean? Well, you see, I'm one of them. I'm going to climb up that mountain, and I'm going to sit down at the feet of Jesus, and I'm going to say to my Lord and my Savior, what does that parable mean? I go to the Holy Spirit of God every day, and I say to him, what does that mean? I'll climb up this mountain. I'll dig in the Word of God. I'll light the candle, but I'm not going to give up. I am a person determined. I want to know what does that mean. You said that if we knock, it'll be opened. If we ask, you will let us know what it means. Now, I'm a asking, I'm a knocking, I'm a climbing up the mountain. I got the shovel, I'm digging deep, the candle's lit. What more do I got to do? Because if there's something else I got to do, let me know what I got to do because I want it. I want to know. And church, if you know something that I don't know, then you had better tell me because I want to know. Somebody got that revelation knowledge. I can eat at the Lord's table. I can eat the bread that the Lord gives you. I can eat the meat that the Lord gives you. I want to know. I am hungry. I am thirsty. And I am never full. Never am I full because I want to know. 
And that's why the precious Holy Spirit of God, which I love dearly, feeds me daily. I am the persistent friend. I will keep knocking on the doors of heaven. Church, my time is ticking. This video went longer than I expected. But if you were sitting here in front of me, it would go so much longer than that because I can talk about my Jesus. I will talk your ears off. I sure will. God bless you. Have a blessed and victorious day today. In Jesus Christ. Most holy name we pray and let the church say amen and amen. God is good, church. God is good.